the market seems to almost operate on its own personality. So we have inflation concerns, we have economic concerns, we have global concerns, and yet the market never seems to care. Um, so that's a good thing, uh, although it's puzzling sometimes to most investors. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the GC360 podcast filmed right here at the Garden City, New York Media Studios in downtown Garden City, New York. I'm your host, Catherine O'Connell. Are you concerned about the current financial market? Well, you're not alone. This year's investment and economic conditions would suggest a confident and optimistic mood among consumers. However, According to a recent Bloomberg Edward Jones report, consumers are still worried about high price tags and find little relief in prices rising slower. So how does the current market affect your portfolio and retirement plan? Joining me today is our guest, Rich Kasparian, owner of Garden City Financial Group, to address concerns and provide common sense answers. Rich, thank you so much for being a guest here on the GC360 podcast. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your business? Sure. Um, I was born and raised in the Bronx, New York. Um, I've been owner of Garden City Financial Group for about 15 years. Uh, prior to that, I was with uh, City Smith Barney. And, and when things were, let's say, somewhat spiraling down in 2009, um, I decided to make the leap and uh, become an independent advisor. And, um, you know, it's been great since then. That's awesome. So how do you think things have changed since 2009? Um, I think obviously we've seen sort of an uptrend in the market constantly. I mean, minus COVID, you know, we, we've had a pretty big run going forward. Um, does that run always equate to just a continuous run? I'm not so sure. Um, the market seems to almost operate on its own personality. So we have inflation concerns, we have economic concerns, we have global concerns, and yet the market never seems to care. Um, so that's a good thing, uh, although it's puzzling sometimes to most investors. So, you know, what I try to do, and what we basically try to do is, you, you know, you never know when that shoe is going to drop. So we, we really look towards trying to come up with ways to protect some downside going forward. Gotcha. So how, how can you tell us a little bit about your clientele? What kind of people do you help out? What kind of people do you work with? Um, basically all, you know, th there are some advisors that have, you know, dead set minimums. Y you know, I, I don't operate that way. Um, some of my largest clients were my smallest clients, you know, if I, if I look back. So, um, many of my clients are, are small business owners in the area. Um, you know, I service clients throughout the country, but a bulk of the clientele that I deal with are, you know, are in this area. Um, but I would say anywhere from, you know, regular investors to small business owners and a lot of people either looking towards retirement or going, going, you know, in retirement. That's great. So how, how can you, how do you help these small business owners? How do you help them to build their finances and financial gain and things? Like right. That? Well, the biggest problem I find with small business owners is they're so busy working in their business that they really don't focus on themselves, you know, per se. They're collecting a check. They're making money. In some cases, they're, they're doing very well. But the biggest problem is, is they're not looking at what if something happens to me as a business owner? Uh, am I protected? Do I have life insurance? If, I'm a, if I have a partner, do we have any kind of agreement if something happens to one of us? Um, do I even have a retirement plan? I, I could tell you so many business owners and maybe successful business owners have little to nothing in their retirement accounts. So I really try to navigate that and, and go through all of these scenarios from life insurance discussion or what we call a buy-sell agreement. If there's a partner whereby one partner's family would get taken care of if something happened to the other partner. And of course, retirement planning. There are many ways to do retirement planning, for, especially for small businesses. 
That's so interesting. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are so focused on, oh, I have to work on my business. Right. I have to make money. They don't really take the time to think about yeah. those kinds of and things. It's, you know, and it's true. And, and, you know, I've seen situations where something does happen and, you know, they're scratching their head. So that, that's one thing we really try to prevent. Well, that's great. So how do you feel that you guys are different from other financial advisors? Um, I, I think there's maybe two aspects. Um, number one, my focus is a big focus on downside protection and looking for ways. There are many programs out there um, that unfortunately a lot of advisors don't discuss that can protect downside. So if I went back many years ago, if you wanted to protect downside, you usually had to give up a lot of upside. Those days are over. Now you can get a really good upside, or in, in some cases, an enormous upside, but still have some downside protection on your investments. Uh, so I think that's one aspect. The other aspect is um, the investment sort of strategy. So many advisors, if you like, if you say to an advisor, hey, I want to invest, I have X amount of dollars in the bank, let's say I have $100,000 in the bank. Many advisors, unfortunately, will invest 99000 of it. So what I do is I work backwards. So the first thing I'll always send, say to an investor or a potential client is, I don't care if it's 50000 or it's $50 million. How much do you want to keep in the bank to be liquid? And I work, so that's how I work backwards. So I work from liquidity first, and then we look towards a five-year range and then a retirement range. That way, if all of a sudden they need money or, you know, there's a problem with their roof or they want to do something or buy a piece of property, they don't have to sell out or liquidate some of their investments and potentially have tax issues, take a penalty. So I would say those are the two ways that I would differentiate myself from other um, advisors. I see. So you definitely would recommend for people to have kind of that rainy day oh, absolutely. Of amount of yeah. money that they can do things with. Because obviously a lot of us, we just go on our day to day. Yeah. We, we, we pay for whatever we can. And then we're like, oh, something happens. Right. And we're like, oh, what do I do? And for everyone, that number is different. Uh, it's sort of an old joke. I had a, an attorney client some years ago and... Um, he kept like $3 million in a savings account earning zero interest. And I would joke with him. I was like, what, when are you buying that house in the Hamptons? You know, like, what's, what are you doing? You know, you need to, you don't need it all. And then, and then he would laugh because he knew it was, a, but it was his in mindset. So for everyone that, for him, $3 million was the number. For, for someone else, it might be 50000 It might be 20000 It might be 100000 or more. So, I, and I always try to cushion it. So if a customer said, no, I want 100000 in the bank, I might say, all right, we'll keep 125, you know, And that way, going forward, we'll know that we don't have to hit any of those accounts because we want them to grow for the future. Got it. So you would kind of figure out what would be the best way for these people to invest the rest of the money into different things. Right. So I'll normally look at what I call a midterm and a long term. The midterm would be maybe like a five-year window. Uh, with investments that either may mature or come due. And then the long term is always looking towards retirement. This is very interesting. Yeah. I feel like I'm learning so much. <laughs> I'm glad. They never teach these yeah. things in school. No, really. they should. They really <laughs> should. Yeah. Especially I feel like my generation, like I, I feel like I know nothing about investing yeah. or, you know, how much do I really need to save? Right. How much do I need to think about for my retirement? It kind of seems like something that passed over. I don't know, I guess with my generation. Yeah. Do you have a lot of clients that are, you know, younger or is there a different age? It, of it's clients? um there's a pretty wide range of age. Um a, a lot of my sort of younger clients um I would say are either referrals from family members. So o over the years I've, you know, started to be introduced to a lot of kids, grandkids. And so I've, I've sort of built it that way. And, and, and really the, the way I built the, most of it is, is really through, through referrals, you know, ov over the years. And it's really sort of grown from there. So I would say initially the business was more of an older clientele, but that has, that has definitely shifted. Well, that means that people must really trust you if they're having generational yeah. people yeah. invest their 
their money to, or they're seeking your help to invest their money. So that's, that's really great to hear. Yeah. Thanks. So, um, how do you think that your business really affects the community? Um, I guess I would come back to those business owners in the community or, um, and, and really kind of try to help in, in that respect. Uh, like I, like I said before, just, just so many businesses in the area, they're, they're just lacking in that end. I mean, I mean, you think about it, you build a big business and if something happens, there's, there's no plan to like, how do you carry this business on? You know, um, and if, if you're in a partnership example, um, most, you know, typically if something happened to one partner, the other partner is not looking forward to working with somebody's family member, <laughs> you know, so typically the way that'll work is insurance would normally take care of the other person's family. Um, but I think that's sort of how, how I, you know, in the community end, you know, really just trying to help the small businesses. What do you think your favorite thing about working in finance is? I, I would say it's the sort of day to day, because I, I get that question a lot, you know, would people just say, really like doing this? It, and, and I actually do, um, because it's because each person or each client or each case, so to speak, if it's a family, it's a trust, um, I have to solve the problems. Like we have to really look for solutions. So I think that's part of my favorite part of it. So how would you really say the process kind of works? Like somebody comes to you and then they say, obviously you're, you're saying, oh, I have this much money and then I want to save this. So how do you kind of determine what things to invest in or what to advise people right. to do? How do you kind of so, make that determination? So if basically when either someone contacts me or I'm referred or I've even been getting referrals now through my website or through social media, um, the first thing I'll do is we'll, if, if, if a customer or a, client, a potential client, let's say they have accounts somewhere else and they're unhappy with them. So one of the first things we would do is we, we would have, first of all, we'd set up a meeting. You know, whether it's Zoom or whether it's in person, offices in, you know, 100 Garden City Plaza, right here in Garden City, um, or we can do a Zoom and just try to get a feel on what they're really looking to do. You know, what their goals are. Is it short term? Is it long term? Um, then based on that, well, also, what, what's their risk tolerance? You know, do they open up a statement or look online and if it's down a penny, they freak out or... That, you know, they're okay with it. So that's important. Then what I'll normally do is the, the, the second visit or maybe they'll email their statements and what they have out there. And then I'll do sort of a review and then probably set up at that point a second meeting to kind of look at what I've uncovered and what they have and what they're unhappy with and then maybe look to make some recommendations. If they don't really have anything invested, but let's say there was an inheritance or they have some extra money, then we kind of start from scratch. And second visit, then we can look at potential, you know, ideas to, you know, to or goals to the future. That's very interesting. So can you tell us, is there any other services that you guys, you know, offer or? Yeah. So uh, an, another issue is we, um, insurance planning. So long-term care and, uh, life insurance, um, Life insurance is sometimes a topic people don't even want to talk about. And there's, there's sort of like an old joke that just because you have, you want to, you discuss life insurance doesn't mean you're going to die, <laughs> you know, um, and long-term care is important too. Like, and that's another one with business owners. What would happen if, you know, someone got disabled and they couldn't work, um, and they needed care, you know, so that, that's an important thing. A long-term disability, uh, is, is also a, a topic. But in terms of the insurance, life insurance, long-term care, um, that would be another area. And we also help with estate planning. So I will coordinate with an attorney, with an accountant, for people who are looking to set up some sort of estate to you know, pass money on in the future. So that would be another avenue. And that, you know, we work, typically, we'll, I'll work closely with an attorney and an, and an accountant to do so. 
This is so interesting. Yeah. I feel like I know nothing about <laughs> this. Um, so w- what do you think is is the best thing for people to protect investments from a market downturn, you know, considering how things are going right now? Um there are, there are several programs out there. Um, you know, in, in a lot of insurance companies have, in, you know, they have investments whereby you can invest in an index like the S&P 500, which is 500 large companies. The Russell 2000, which is 2,000 smaller and mid-tier companies. Um, you know, everyone talks about the Dow Jones because we see that on the news every night. The Dow is 30 stocks. So, so a lot of the focus has shifted into these other indexes now. Um, but, but insurance companies will have programs out there or, new, or programs where you could invest in these indexes, get some really good returns with some really good upside, but also if things turn ugly, in some cases you can have some protection and in other cases you can have full protection. Um, the programs with full protection won't offer you as much upside, understandable, but the programs with some protection will generally offer you ver- some very good upside. Um, and, you know, those types of programs you can do in, in, a, in a regular account or you could do them in a retirement account. There are also other types of investments out there called structured notes. These are bonds that have a maturity, three years, five years, Invest in one of those indexes, but they also have a downside protection feature. So those are kind of good for sort of midterm investments when a person is saying, hey, I want something maybe three years, five years, but I don't want a lot of risk. You know, I want some protection. So those are just the examples of a couple of categories that, you know, people could invest in to get, you know, to get some good upside with downside protection. Okay, that's great. So how, uh, this is just so interesting. So how do you guys kind of find out what are the best things to invest in? How do you know that? How do you discover that? How do you guys keep track of that? Well, to be honest, like I get inundated from every possible investment company you could imagine, you know, phone, even phone calls, Uh, but mostly emails. Um, This is the latest this, this is the latest that. Um, so you kind of got to filter through all of it. And, and really, there are sort of categories of investments. Um, and once you sort of know the categories that, you know, make a good recommendation to a customer, then you have to sort of determine, you know, which investment might make the, the most sense for customers. I'll just jump around to life insurance for a second that's that's the same scenario in life insurance. Like, how do you pick that life insurance company? Life insurance works a little differently. If someone has a medical condition, there are literally certain life insurance companies that are more advantageous to certain medical conditions. So some companies might reject the person if they're not healthy, but maybe another company will accept them. So again, you have to kind of navigate those things um, that's life insurance, but on, on terms of investments, it's just part of what I do. You kind of got to filter through all of it and see which one makes this, makes the most sense. So they, the life insurance, they might be willing to accept somebody who's, you know, not doing well because they think they might be closer to, you know, paying out the life insurance policy. Yeah. I mean, that's part of it. In life insurance world, there's something called ratings, R-A-T-I-N-G. And, and what a rating basically is, is depending on the questions you answer, because we have to ask questions, health questions to, to, the, to the customer, um, they will rate you based on your health. So you could be preferred, you could be standard, but which is tip, a pretty typical standard or you can be rated, and there's a table of ratings. The lower your rating is, the, the higher the cost is going to be. And then, of course, a person would have to make a determination at that point if it makes sense to do it. That's so interesting. Yeah. I yeah. never knew that. Yeah. So does your age have a lot to do with that, yes. too? Okay. Yes. Age yes. is definitely going to raise it. Cost, um, you know, females are generally less expensive, because typically on the charts, they live longer uh, than males, but age is definitely a factor. That's good. Yeah. I can save some money on life insurance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, 
what what other interests do you have and are you working on any other kind of projects at the moment besides finances or um not specifically i mean you know we're 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 we've been growing now through like, like i said before um a few years ago you know i had very little presence you know out there and then it kind of started with like revamping the website um and and then really getting more into social media doing podcasts uh, posting some, inf you know, a lot of informational videos on Instagram. Um, so kind of really just building the business in, in, in ways that just a few years ago, because in, in our business, you, you know, a lot of these things weren't even done year a few years ago. So that's all kind of changed. And now, you know, in the business, they realize, look, you have to reach out in different, different areas. It, you know, it's, it, there's a lot out there that you can reach out to. So that must have been a little bit of a tough transition to kind of transition from maybe things being done a certain way. And now everything's about social media and posting. So that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's difficult, but you, ju you just have to kind of make it part of your week, so to speak. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's some days as I didn't do a video today and I get a little aggravated. But, you know, you get busy and you don't you don't always you don't always do it. But yeah, but I think that's uh, that's just become a big focus. The other thing I got to say I'm really proud in the business is that with our existing or my existing clientele, um, the phone doesn't virtually doesn't ring. And, and I'm not going to say it doesn't ring at all, but um, if you're an advisor that's just pitching performance and this is going to do this stock's going to go here and this mutual fund's going to do this and and then it doesn't you know your your phone's going to going to light up you're going to get emails all the time um it really doesn't i mean more or less are the calls that that i'm fielding are more on you know just questions on an account or some servicing we need to do or maybe we need to change a beneficiary or maybe client needs to make a withdrawal. So that's one thing I'm I'm kind of really proud of. And I, and I, I just kind of think that's the way I built the business, more on the protection feature. Um, you know, I'll go back to 08 and 09. You know, a lot of clients were in, in what we call income-based guarantees, where in other words, they were getting income from their investments or an income annuity. Um, and I could remember then clients calling say, Hey, I'm receiving three thousand dollars a month. When are they going to cut that in half? Because they were looking at the market collapsing, and I would say, "Well, no, you have a guaranteed income stream on that investment." So, so even going back then, because that was like a, a huge crash, you know, you, you, I started to kind of see how this all evolved, and and that's kind of really built the built business even from there. Well, it must be very helpful for people to know that they have someone like you in their corner who kind of knows how things work in this and, and how things are going to go. I mean, it must be difficult to kind of predict how things are going to go since nobody really knows that, right? Right. I mean, and th that's another reason that I will um, address that up front, you know, with, with somebody. And I will say, okay, I could show you that the S&P 500 has basically returned 8% since 1957, even with the ups and downs. But what if that doesn't matter? And what if something turns ugly? And then then what? You know, um, and all you have to do is, you know, people, because because there's this mentality out there. Yeah, but the market over time always does well. And that is a true statement. There's no doubt about it. But does the investor have the tolerance to go through it? And ask anyone who retired in 2000, 2001, um, that was the, when the dot-com stocks collapsed and 01 was 9-11, or ask anyone who tried to retire in 09 or 08 when things collapsed, or, you know, right in the heart of COVID, you know, what, did, what was the story? So if they were in investments that were all growth with no protection, now you're withdrawing money. From a, from a declining account. So you don't have time to make it up over a period of a number of years. So th those are just sort of important conversations. Yeah, that sounds very complex. Yeah. Um, so what other financial advice would you give to people at this time? 
I think that, you know, depending on your age, you know, for younger investors or people starting in the workforce force, or maybe, you know, they're in their early 30s or mid 30s, you have to be, if, you, if you're at a job, you have to be in a, you should be in a 401k. Money is coming out of your account. You forget about it and it's sort of going away. And in many cases, employers will match. So if you put away 5%, the employer might in, you know, put away 5% for you. Now you've literally put away 10% a year that will grow tax deferred. Some companies now are even offering Roth IRAs, which when you retire, the money comes out tax free, which is, which is a, a definitely a nice feature. If your company doesn't offer anything, then you could see a financial advisor like myself and you can open up an IRA account or a Roth IRA account if you qualify, because we'd always have to check with your accountant to make sure you're going to get the tax benefit. Um, so that's, a, that's sort of a must. Life insurance is another issue that when people are super young, they don't think about it. The first time they might think about it is, is if they have a family. But again, it is so dirt cheap when you're young. And you could, you, you know, so people say, how much life insurance do I need for, say, a family of four? It's, you know, with the mortgages and things of that, it's not uncommon for a person to have a million bucks now in life insurance. Because if you think of something happened to somebody young, they need a lot of coverage. So, um, but those would sort of be the conversations. As people, uh, the other conversations I have a lot of people leave a job and they have this sort of 401k just hanging out there. Nobody's watching it. They're not looking at it. Um, so typically, you know, they, they have the ability to roll those over if they choose. Um, so, you know, that, that's an option if it makes sense and they want to do it. That's an option. And as people get older, it's, it's sort of planning for retirement. Yeah, so I'm sure you're just you're never too young to start. Right? No, absolutely that's not. Would, yes, that's what you would advise. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's definitely something I need to go and start thinking more about after our conversation today. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Rich, is there anything else you want to share? Our uh, website is GardenCityFinancialGroup.com, Instagram Garden City Financial Group, Facebook Garden City Financial Group. Uh, also have a YouTube channel, so you can catch a lot of videos that I you know I think could be interesting. Well, thank you so much, Rich. Thank you. I really a appreciate it. Guest. I thank feel like you. I've learned so much. I'm glad. It was so informative. And um, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of the GC360 podcast. I'm your host, Catherine O'Connell, and we'll see you next time. Bye.